Hello beaters, my name is Jana and today I want to do some macrame with you. Um, this is a pretty difficult project to do uh, if you're going to do this for the very first time. Uh, this is what I'm going to make today with you, but I will show you how to get these waves equally uh, so you can do it for the first time and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, to set that up, to get everything straight, is a bit of a, a job, but it will pay off in the end when your project is finished. I wanted to show you this one too, because I really love this one, and it's really nice and sparkly. It's got two millimeter um, Swarovskis here, but it's not uh, done quite uh, right yet. Uh, it's just a practice project, so I will perfectionize this and make sure that you get that done. Uh, correctly too because I'm hoping to make that uh, the next uh, tutorial. It's very pretty. So let's get started. What do you need? Well I got some thread here that is about a millimeter I think thick. Um, it's called Lucky and Lucky. I, I, I bought this in Australia. I have no idea uh, what it is, what kind of thread it is, but it's a little bit thicker than the thread I'm going to use, uh, which is a regular cotton. This is very thin, but um, I really like to work with this. I I have been doing all the macrame projects that I've been doing so far, the teaching myself macrame with this, and I really like it. But if you don't have this in the house, that's okay. Use whatever you have because if this is the first time you're going to macrame, you want to make sure you like it before you go out and buy uh, other stuff to do this with. So this is just regular cotton. It's very cheap. It's like um, 250 in euros. So it's that that what didn't cost much, and neither did this. This was like a, I think one Australian dollar, which is comparable to one euro. Next. You need something round like a cylinder. This is uh, for posters, to, um, so uh, it's round and it's smooth and you need that because your th the threads, the first setup, need to slide uh, on, the, on the surface of this. You need something heavy. I got a dumbbell here. Now I know of course not everybody has a dumbbell handy. So what you can do is when you have this cylinder you can put two heavy objects right on the side because what what we want is we want to be able to pull this cylinder to get our threads tied but we need something heavy in front of it to block that so you can put two things on the side make sure it's not glass just in case you pull too hard and and a vase falls over or something so you don't want to do that so we're gonna do first we're gonna start up what you need is your black you need about three quarters of an arm span wide of this thread I'm going to cut that off and we're going to set that up under the roll and just pull those two threads through the loop. There. Put that on the side. The cotton, you need seven threads in total of an arm span and a half wide. So just do them one by one. Uh, just get the first one off and measure the second one next to it. And it's about an arm span and a half. So what I'm going to do is with this thread, I'm just going to take my second thread. I'm just going to take it like this, put it together, and just measure it like that. And when I've done the measuring of that one, I'm going to take one, put one in my lap and get the other one out. I get the ends there and also put that underneath my roll and pull that through. There, now we got two. Pause the video right here until you have set up six more of these and then we're gonna continue. Okay so I have my seven threads set up. I'm gonna put these on the side for a second. Just that first one. Get that out. Make sure they don't overlap each other. That they stay nicely in order. And I'm now gonna take my dumbbell. I'm gonna put that underneath it. There. Sorry for the clanging. And you will hear it a couple of more times. Now, there are things that 
are called forward knot and backwards knot, but I'm not going to go through all that. I'm just going to try and explain this very simply. You can always, if you like it, you can always uh, focus more on it and, and see what is a backward knot and a forward knot and all kinds of knot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the first row, the first two rows, and try and keep them straight. Because so far I haven't seen anybody that has been able to do that uh, perfectly, so I'm going to try and do that perfectly. You know me, I'm a perfectionist. We're going to start off with the very first thread and we hold that in our right hand. And this is easy for right-handed beaters, but it's going to be difficult for left-handed beaters. So I got a trick for that also. Make sure you got your right thread and that they don't mix up. You're going to pick the other black thread up with your left hand and you're going underneath when you pick up a thread. Okay, so you got one in right hand, one underneath. And you're going to put that over your finger and then you're going to Pull that through and this pull that knot one and try not to go underneath um, the thread that you have set up here so just pull that down a little bit and then we're gonna do that again hold that thread that you got in your right hand put your other thread over your finger and go underneath to make that loop and then pull tight okay then we're going to pick up the first white thread of the two. Well, let me see if I got that in the right order here. There it is. Make sure that you keep holding that same thread, okay, with the right hand. You're going to go over your finger and underneath and pull it. And you're going to do that again over your finger, underneath pull it. Now, we need to go in a certain direction, which is straight. You want this area to be straight. Let me show you. There. You want that to be perfectly straight, the first two rows. So, for the right-handed people, it's easy to pull it straight, but for the left-handed people, you might want to just pull that over a little bit. I will show you. Take up pick up your second thread you're still holding this and this is supposed to be on that side so go underneath pick that up over your finger and in there so that's one now right-handed people can do this left-handed people just do this to make sure it's tight and if you're right-handed and you want to do it like this that's fine too but it's just a little trick for the left-handed people so we're gonna go do that again over your finger Pull that tight. Now you get two. Now pick up the next one. Get the first thread. And remember just to, to hold this thread so you know this is the one that you have to hold in your right hand. Uh, which is easy because I now have a black thread but when I start off with two black threads it's not that easy. It might get them mixed up. Okay. So do that again. Over your finger. And underneath and pull that tight and again over your finger underneath and pull that tight and the next thread over your finger and pull it tight and pull that second one really tight so that these threads on here are really tight around it and another one Now, if you have a little bit of black space in between here where you see your thread, sometimes it can just be okay if you put on the next thread. So it will uh, slide it over. It's not always the case, but most of the time it is the case. So I'm not going to talk about it until we actually get to that point. Right now, let's just focus on one thing at a time. Over your finger. And pull it together. See? Oh, there it is. Now I got a little bit of a black thread here. And when I do the next one, and pull that tight, it's all gone. See? Nothing to worry about. So, I'm going to take up the next thread, over the finger, and do that again, and over the finger, 
and do that again. There. Now we're going to do this with all the threads until we're all the way at the end. Okay, so pause the video now and I'll get back to you when you're at the end. Okay, now I did my first row and as you can see I pulled it really hard. So it's a little bit curvy, but it's not really curvy because when I put it like this, it's all straight. So just straighten that out and you'll be okay. And we're all the way at the end. So now what we're going to do is we got all the threads on the left side and we got the black thread on the right side. We're going to pick it up with our left hand. We're going to go underneath to pick up the first thread with the right hand and then we're going to do the same only in reverse. And this is nice for uh, left-handed beaters. Make sure that first row stays somewhat straight. And this is nice for uh, this is really nice for the left-handed beaters because this is the way they would tie a knot. So this is difficult for us right-handed beaters. So make sure you got that in the left hand and then you go underneath to pick up your thread. Go over your finger and into that loop with the thread and there. And now we are the ones that need to go pull that up like that. But first we're going to just do this, make a little, keep that a little loop over there. And then we're going to put on the second one over your finger into the loop and we're going to pull that not too tight because now we're going to put a little head pin in there and then we're going to pull, pull that tight but stay on this side of the head pin so we can go underneath it. You will have a little bit of a black space but that's okay. Uh, we'll move that over later uh, with the threads to come. So just pull that tight. Pick up your next thread over your finger and into the loop. And just push that over there. Now I have a space that has two black areas that show but it's going to be okay. Trust me. So Pull that second one really tight and put that black pull that black thread up there, up here. Okay, that's two. And left-handed beaters, you can just go straight. If you got control over that, if not, just pull it up too. Next one, over the finger, into the loop. Pull that through, move that over. And you can use your nails to push that over a little bit if you want to, like that. And do that again. And just push that up straight. Okay, we're going to take the head pin out now. And move that over a little bit with your head pin, like that. Everything should be fine. Now try not to pull this with your right hand because you will pull your straight line right down again. So just put that on, on the side so you don't have the uh, urge to pick that up. And get that next thread. Pick the thread up with your left hand. Go over your finger and into the loop. And just pull that up, that black thread up there. And again. And the next one. Over your finger and into the loop. And again. So every thread gets done twice. Okay which is logical by now. Now, I wanted to show you something. Say for instance you made a booboo and you only uh, did, um, you made a booboo somewhere and you need to get that out. What I do is I take my needle, let me just zoom that in a little bit more. What I do with my needle is with the point of my needle I just go in between these two carefully so you don't 
Demeter thread. I go in between. I'm trying to carefully pull that open. As soon as I got it a little bit open, I'll take the back of my thread. There. And then I will pull out the black thread. Okay? So that's the way I... Uh, if I make a mistake, I fix it. Okay. Let me put that back in there because that was where it was supposed to be. It wasn't a mistake. There. Let me zoom you out. Okay. That one up there. Pick the next one up. Thread left hand over the finger into the loop. There we go. One. And two. Keep that a little bit straight on the top. That one over there, don't pull it. I just want to pick it up with my right hand continuously. Don't know why, but... And it, as soon as I do, I will pull it down and that one will go... come down. Okay. Left hand. Over. Now, if you ever get confused if you need to pick up your left hand or your right hand to hold the thread, which I did several times, just remember if I hold with my left hand, my threads are on my left side. If I roll with my if I hold it with my right hand, my threads are on the right side, okay? So there we go. Just do this all the way to you get to the end. And pause me now and I will see you there, okay? One. Okay, I did my last one. That means the black one. And I took off all my threads. I'm going to now untangle these. And that for the next part you will need either a book, but something heavy, and something straight. Uh, I actually found out that a paper cutter slicer works perfectly for me to continue my work on. Uh, because the slicer um, has a, a button on it where it will hold my paper before I slice it. So, and that's that's perfect for me to put this uh, in. But right now I'm going to untangle these. And that's what you need to do first. And then I will show you. Okay, everything is untangled now. So I'm going to pick up my parts, my loops. And I'm going to do them in the same direction. Pick them up one by one. So they don't tangle. And you just need to do that until you have them all on your fingers. You don't really need to have them in order, but as long as they're all uh, not twisted like that, you know, that you got them like twisted around several times. Because you want to try and get that thread straight as much as possible. Just little, little uh, thingies little details that will help you keep that project straight. There. That's a little twisted. There. And there. Okay, now. You can put them back on your cylinder. But you will need to keep those weights against the cylinder at all times. I'm going to put them in my dumbbell and what I'm going to do next is you can put a book here you need to just make sure that this straight line comes underneath from that book so you can keep an eye on that straight on those two straight lines what I got is a paper cutter and that works perfectly I'm going to put my threads underneath paper cutter and you can't see what I'm doing right now but that's okay I'll show you and now I need you to come on over see what I did I got the um, the lines underneath my paper cutter and I'm gonna just push that paper cutter down and that will hold it in place now nothing is secure as soon as I go work, I probably will pull this from underneath.
but then we're just going to pull that right back. You just need to keep an eye out that those lines will continue to be straight. Let me see if I can get that a little bit more. So, we're going to start with the next part. We're going to pick up our second black thread, not the first, the second one, and we're going to hold that in our right hands. Yay for the right-handed people! And we're going to take up our first of the white threads. These are nicely put in order by now, by you. And we're going to pick up the right thread, the first one, just get the rest out of the way, and we're going to go over our finger again, underneath. But now we're going to point in a direction. So first we would pull this straight, now we want a direction like this. So we're going to go and pull that up all the way. There's a big knot there that will automatically not make you able to be go straight anyway, or you can, but then it will be difficult to do. So we're going to go and pull that straight and tight, and we're going to do that again. Put that over and in there. And we're going in this direction, so you need to pull your th black thread in that direction. Now the second thread, and you got to be careful with that, but this is the second black thread we're going to pick up. You got to be careful with that, because this thread is automatically on top of this thread. So what you need to do is you need to go and take it and put it underneath, because you need to go underneath to pick up your thread. And you really got to be careful with that, because it's going to look really crappy if you don't do that. So just put the next one over your finger and then the only thing this black thread needs to do is to come close to this first black thread. And the best way to do that is just to cross over it, to get it as close as possible. And we're going to do that again. There we go. And I'm just pulling it over the other black thread to get it as close as possible. And that's the first one. And now we're going to do the second thread. And the odd thing is, these threads don't really tangle much. I, I was afraid that it would tangle more. So we're going to pick up with the right hand, take our second thread. I'm going to pull that. If you just need to see the direction, just pull these straight. And you want to go in this direction with the black thread. So do it again. Second one, loop over it there. And again, the thread is over the second black thread. So pick it up and go underneath the black thread first before you do your two loops. And uh, God only knows if they're backward or forward knots. I think I have no idea. No, I'm not even going to go there and do that again. There, pull that over the other black thread. Get that nice and tight. Now, and you're just going to continue doing this until you get to the end. Until you do your last uh, thread, your last white thread, and that's one. And just pull them tight, okay? You don't need to leave space uh, in between here because that's not what it's about. The way it it becomes nice and curvy is everything is everything is straight first. So this is the way basically you're working, and then you're gonna take your bracelet when you're done, and you're gonna do this. And then that's the way it's going to be. So pull that thread really tight. It's, uh, you don't have to leave, give it any room. This takes about four hours to make. So make sure you have the four hours. And I'm telling you this is because if you s put this project away after two hours and you try and knot again the next day, your knots might not be as tight as you started. Or you might not... Um, well, it's just differently. Every day is differently. I tried putting a project away and picking it up the next day and it just didn't look the same. So the best thing to do is just to do it uh, in one and make sure that you have the time for it. So this takes about four hours uh, to make and uh, that is uh, excluding the clasp. So that, But then that doesn't really matter. As long as everything that you weaved um, here is, is done in the same day until you get really experienced and then you can uh, properly put it aside for the next day. So, just do this and continue doing this. 
and we're gonna pull that a little bit closer to the black knot and the first black thread there and there you will start with a gap because uh, of the big black thread here so all, all you can do is just work them together uh, as soon as possible so just finish your way all the way down like this and pause me now and I will see you there okay now that we have the first part done um, we're gonna do take the outside black thread and we're going to put two size 8.0 on there but of course if you have different thread that might not fit so just get two beads that do fit on there and do two uh, two beads on this thread and one bead on that thread okay there we're gonna start off with our second thread on the right side and we're gonna hold that in our left hand again go underneath pick that thread up and go over and pull that real tight and then get the next one put that over so this is where the left-handed beaters are happy again kinda have a little bit of a space in between there but that's okay we'll fix that when the next thread goes on there left thread, white thread goes underneath so just in case you did throw that over there remember underneath and over your finger into the loop and get that as close as possible as you can just pull that real tight so that it gets close to that one and when the next one just tighten that up there and that's the first one now because I pulled that real tight and actually over the thread this will go on top so be careful because that you don't pick up your next white thread with the black thread the second black thread that you need to do this is the first black thread you need to do pick that up underneath pick that up with your left hand over your finger into the loop and just pull that real tight and you can move it over with your finger a little bit if you want to like that that makes you feel more secure and then get the next one and over that boom and again this white thread goes over the black thread now make sure that you got that turned around okay left hand right uh, left finger over the finger into the loop there and the next one there and if you want to push that over then be my guest there fixed it okay next one that's the third thread this is three And now we get to the fourth thread. We're going to do something special with that. So I'm just going to put those aside, pick up the fourth thread, and we're going to. You're going to uh, maybe need a big eye needle for that. I got one right here. I, every respectable beater got one in the house, I guess. Um, I'm going to put that on your fourth thread. And with this, I'm going to pick up. A seed bead size 11, a pearl, and a seed bead. Now we're going to pick up the first one again, the black thread. We're going to go over our finger. And we're going to just pull that up. And push that there. Now I'm going in that direction as you see. So that's where I want to go. That's where I'm pulling the thread sometimes a little bit more up because I want to make sure that that's really nice and tight it's over again so I need to put it underneath and over my finger 
and just pull that and just take care of that left handed is really hard to do you guys got the same problem with that? so not left handed okay and then I'm just gonna pull the second thread over the first thread again and you can push that over if you want now I'm gonna keep that tight so I'm gonna make sure that that white thread now goes under the pearl because I'm not gonna give it any leverage I'm just gonna keep that straight so I don't want it like this it goes under the pearl underneath make sure you got it underneath and pull that tight do that again pull that tight and it will push up your pearl and the white thread won't be in the way going over your pearl by any chance so I'm gonna do that again where you go and that also goes for the next thread I want that under the pearl see because if that goes straight it needs to be under the pearl you're just gonna keep that thread straight and tight push that over a little bit like that there and the next one and I'm sneaky see that and I'm pushing that over with the second thread now the next thread when it goes straight it will be next to the pearl again so I'm gonna just go do that one two one and two and let me show you what that looks like on the back pearl pushing the pearl up holding it in place and the last one is going right next to it again so I'm gonna put that back and keep an eye on that those first two rows that they're all still straight all right everything's still straight there okay then we continue and we're just gonna do this all the way to the end and let me catch up with you when we get there so pause me now and I'll see you in a second okay I'm at the end again <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on two seat beats on the last thread and one on this thread and then we're gonna turn back again so yay for us right-handed again because now we're gonna go pick that up with the right hand and the white thread goes underneath We're going, still going in that direction, so that's one and two, and make that real tight, and get the second one. One and two, and the second one. One. and one and two okay now untie this or get it from underneath your book and let me show you a little trick and take some paper and, and take this paper put it underneath there Keep that straight. Your beads are here, here, and this is your middle. This is where your thread started. Okay, and you got one bead here and one bead there. Let me see, get that in, in place. One bead here, one bead here, and this is your middle. Okay. Now, you need something straight, so let's get a book or something, a little box, and just pull that line where you started, just pull it through, okay? Now, this is where your middle is, so go from one side. 
to the next where that middle is. There. Now copy that on another piece of paper. of paper, put it underneath this one, and get that arrow, get that line, I don't know if you can see that, but you will see it at home. Make sure that the papers are straight underneath each other, and that line crosses. there and that line should cross there there now here's the trick if all is correct and push that paper down your project straight and now we need to know we know that we need to go right here with our thread okay so keep working on this line that you just made so that should be easy enough right you can do the Chris you can do the crossing all the way down or you can just put, pull your paper down it depends on what you like best I'm just gonna be lazy I'm just gonna do it like that take my paper down bit it bit at a time. <clears throat> Put that straight. See if that's straight. Yep, that's all good. And this, of course, is going to make a lot of noise. But I'm just going to do this for right now because that's what's going to work for me. Right hand, left thread, one, Two, and I need to go in that direction. Okay. And this one just comes up to the first one. Okay, let me just cut this off so that it won't make too much noise. There. And this we're going to do our fourth thread now. So for the fourth thread, we're going to put on that seed bead and that pearl and that seed bead again, or whatever you're using to put on there to decorate it. Put the fourth one on there. Underneath, right hand. Yay. Make a knot. Pull that tight. And the second one. Second thread. Oops, sorry. And two. And if it, this isn't going next to the way you want it, just take a nail or a knife if you don't have nails and just kind of push it, push it towards that. Just don't make make sure that if you do use a knife that you're not using one like a that's so sharp that you're cutting through your threads. There. And I need to go in that direction. Okay. So, just keep doing that and follow the line on your paper and you should be making a perfect first piece that will probably make advanced macrame beaters a little jealous that they didn't have this kind of directions and they had to just learn it by doing it as often as they could to get everything straightened out. Okay. Well, pause me here and I'll see you at the end. So, did you guys manage to stay on the line? I did pretty well. And when we get to the end, we're just going to put on the seat beads again and you're just going to continue all the way down until you have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pearls on there. 
uh, I'm going to sh uh, show show you how the end is done with this one because this is going to take me another f two and a half hours and I want to get this video tutorial done so I can get it uploaded. Yay! So this is uh, the same bracelet, it just has a couple of threads less. So the best thing to do is when you have your piece of paper there. Make sure that that's straight and you're going to be pulling this so make sure that that I got ah ah and then you're gonna just pull that through. Yeah, it's a little higher. Wait. I can't see it. Looking over the box, it's very difficult. There. I think that's about the line I need. Yeah, that would be perfect. Okay, so we're gonna try and stay on a straight line. And I'm gonna pick up the first one now, we're gonna go work that way. So we're gonna pick it up with the left hand and we're gonna do the knot that we did in the beginning. So we're gonna go with this one. One. And two. And hold that, left hand underneath. And one. And And now you just need to keep that line straight right on there. Next one. One. And two. And if you're losing direction a little bit, just pull that more up like that. And this is really good for the left-handed beaters, of course, and they get to get their first straight line. And we're just going to be struggling, unless you end up at the other side, of course, which would be also smart. But then um, you, you want an, an even amount of uh, beads because you have that this thingy here on the left on the other on the left side so you kind of want it to mirror each other instead of having both black parts on the side so it's nice it looks nicer to mir mirror it so that's why you uh, want an even amount of course if you're not that picky which I am of course you don't have to So this is really hard doing that with left. But it's going okay. No complaints so far. Okay. Picking up the next one. course if you want to even do this if, if this is really hard for you to do then just get something to put underneath here underneath your paper uh, like a pad or a piece of cardboard or something and just put pins in here so that will stay that it will stay straight I have to say that um, I have to tell you I have to tell you guys that I've only uh, did did this for the very first time last Sunday. It is Sunday again now. It's only been a week. Um, I did this four different times to figure out how to do it straight with the lines <clears throat> and um, how to clip it tight. And so I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the progress that I've made. I hope that in time I will become very good at this actually and uh, that there will be more of these uh, beading tutorials, more advanced ones 
because uh, I do love the friendship bracelets. I just I'm just not 12 anymore. You know what I mean? So it's got to be a friendship bracelet that gets more is more for adults than for kids actually. But this would be cool for kids too. Uh, if if you have kids or grandchildren, these would make perfect uh, Christmas gifts with, of course, not the Swarovski beads on them, because they will start laughing at you. But like for instance, uh, the letters, you know, you got little beads that have letters on them or fonts or whatever you call them, and um, you can just spell out names on them, and they're pretty cool. And of course, not with this design, but. Uh, yeah, you can insert those or you can just make friendship bracelets and sew the the beads on and and maybe you have some thoughts of your own too uh, on what to do with them and what you can do with them next. And then we're going to go back, but I have no room actually to put that head pin in now. So I'm going to do this by hand and take it into the right hand and just gonna see what we can do. Pull it carefully, not too far. You can always pull it in later. And this is a little difficult because now the second line has to go of course underneath there straight. As straight as possible. Just pull this up, guys, just right there. And then you can move it over. I think you gotta move it over from the other side. There. So this is a bit difficult. But if you manage to do the part above, gonna let this one tackle you. There, and I just did my last one. So, how does that look? Pretty straight, huh? Okay, so the next thing is I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna push that down again because I'm gonna braid it. But I don't want to braid it on the front because, because then if you braid it on the front this is gonna come in the front. So I want this on the back and these we're gonna take half half each six six okay and we're just gonna break that and we're gonna break that really tight but not too tight it st still needs to be straight right there and do that for a second And we're not going to use all this thread that is left, but I'll just tie a knot and just make it on the braided area, so like that. This knot is going to come off anyway. We're going to still cut this knot off, so just make sure that you have a braided thread because now we're going to do the other side. And the other side. Still has the loops, so we got to cut the loops first. There we go, cut them all, or you can just cut off the top of them all so that you don't have to cut them one by one. And we're gonna braid it the same way six six, I think I believe it was two four six. You can put the knot right there, top of the braided area. There, don't have to pull that tight, just leave it like that. <laughs> 